thank you very much, Professor Ye, for inviting me. And uh, I've been really enjoying uh, visiting Shaman, and I hope that you'll find my talk interesting. So uh, first, uh, an overview of the talk. So I will look at uh, words for tiger in Southeast Asia, and then uh, words for tiger in Tibet and Japan. Uh, where they don't have tigers, yeah. So they probably will use someone else's word, right? Uh, and then how do we reconstruct uh, tiger in Old Chinese? So first, looking at tigers in Southeast Asia, in Angkorian Khmer, the word for tiger is kla, yeah. Okay. And in Old Burmese, the word for tiger is yeah. So basically, all of Southeast Asian languages they have a word like "pla" for tiger. Uh, so that's what. Yeah. So that's tiger in Southeast Asia is "kla." Okay. So how about in uh, Tibet and Japan? So in uh, in Japanese, uh, the word for tiger is "tora," and it's first attested in the year 702, yeah. And then in Tibetan, the word for tiger is stuck. So here, I just want to say that uh, possibly, you know, they, there's no relationship between uh, tiger in South Asia, so Southeast Asia, tiger in Japan and tiger in Tibet. This, I don't think actually that my presentation uh, needs to hang on this question. But some people have thought that uh, these words are related to the Chinese. So I want to look at that a little bit. Okay. So uh, Alexander Vovin, who is a Japanologist, a guy who studies the history of Japanese language, in 2021, so quite recently, and actually uh, he has subsequently passed away, uh, so this is one of his very last articles. Uh, he directly connects the Japanese and Southeast Asian forms. Uh, he's not very clear about what he has in mind, uh, but he more or less proposes that the Japanese T in Tora corresponds to the K in Tla, and the Japanese R in Tora corresponds, corresponds to the L in uh, Kla. So it's not clear to me how he thinks it works, but this much he does make clear, that he thinks Tora comes from Kla. Yeah, uh, now I talk about in Tibet. Yeah. So uh Beckwith, who's an American, and Kiyose, a Japanese scholar. They reconstruct uh, old Chinese star, okay, which would be in the conventions in just the symbols used by Baxter Cigar would be sta. So uh, I think most people think this is a very strange way to uh, reconstruct old Chinese, and that they are basing it very closely on the Tibetan form. This reconstruction is, uh, according to the normal rules of old Chinese historical phonology, it's not possible. Yeah. Uh, but if Japanese and Tibetan, uh, uh, we think of as having similar words for tiger, and somehow they do, right? Like they both have a T and then a vowel and then some kind of consonant at the end, right? So stuck and tora could be somehow related especially because Japanese would have added a vowel there, right? They they do that in Japanese. They always add vowels uh, 
for phonotactic reasons. So maybe the Japanese and Tibetan are related. If they are, they would have to come from China, right? Uh, because China is the place between Tibet and Japan. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to work on the hypothesis that the Chinese borrowed a word like kla, and then they loaned a word like, you know, stuck or tora, right? So that seems to be the, I think the, in some ways, the null hypothesis, right? That like, because tigers are probably oldest in, uh, I don't know, uh, Hmong Khmer or, you know, Southeast Asian languages. Uh, so maybe Chinese borrowed kla and then lent uh, something with the T. That's my hypothesis. And then we see whether I can get it to work or not. That's kind of the rest of the paper is to see whether to get it to work. Okay. So now let's look at tiger in Chinese. So the word for tiger is hu, right? So in middle Chinese, it's uh, it's it's also hu. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I just explain, yeah. Uh, this is this is he, yeah. The little x is he, and the big x means uh, chang chang. No, sorry, no. Is that right? Chang chang, yeah. Chang -chang. Okay, so it's a tone, yeah. So yeah, middle Chinese has four tones, right? Yeah, ping sheng, chu sheng, ru sheng, and zhang sheng. Yeah. So this is uh, writing in there in Baxter or in Baxter's system for writing middle Chinese. So what does it come from in old Chinese? Well, this u comes from a, ah, yeah, and this is the so-called Ubu, the fish section. <laughs> yeah, like ubu is uh, in Middle Chinese is u, like in in the word u. You know, you know fish, right? U, u. Yeah. So uh, it's a in Middle Chinese u, and in Old Chinese a. Ah. So if you've studied uh, Chinese historical phonology, that will just be something you know. But I will give you some proof anyhow. So the word Buddha, which in Middle Chinese would be something like Buddha, 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 yeah. Uh, it is Buddha <laughs> in let's say Han Dynasty Chinese, yeah. So the the Du comes from the Da, right? Okay. Uh, now also if you look at uh, Sino-Tibetan comparisons, we have, uh, I don't know, Wu maybe, like Wu is me, yeah. Uh, so in Middle Chinese, it was pronounced Mu, uh, but uh, the Tibetan word is Nga, uh, and the Burmese word is Nga, yeah. So uh, we think the Old Chinese was probably Nga, yeah. So now I've given you at least some indication that the U in Middle Chinese comes from A in Old Chinese, right? So now if we just imagine our word for tiger, it's something like Ha, right? Maybe not Hu, but Ha, yeah? But what does the the H sound come from? The, what is the sources of Ha in uh, Old Chinese? Yeah. That's this question. What is the source of the he in Old Chinese? Uh, and I think I don't prove it because it gets way too complicated, yeah? But I just tell you the sources of he in Old Chinese. So uh, these are the three main sources of he in Old Chinese. Uh, and then I'll just point to them and say them as best I can. So this one is a voiceless velar nasal, so it's nga. Yeah. Okay. This one is a voiceless bilabial nasal, so ma. And this one is a aspirated uvular stop. So it's very hard for me to do, but 
Come back. Hello. Oh. Okay. So this is, you know, let's say most people, I think, at least in Dublin and in Shaman, we agree these are three sources of Middle Chinese ha. So now we could say tiger, maybe, maybe tiger was ha, or maybe it was ma, or maybe it was ha. Okay. But it's not so easy even, because in a, in a Western dialect of Old Chinese, there's three more options. No, four options. Yeah, four options. So I'll go through these as well. So this one is a voiceless R. So ta, ta. No, <laughs> but it's okay. It's like an R. Yeah, but then, but then you make uh, it voices. Okay. Like, like, just you can make a normal Chinese R, like you know, wall uh, wrench, but then don't vibrate your voice. You say it's a shensh. Okay, and then this one is same, but for an L, so sla. You say like la, like lie or lie. You say slice. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> And then also, no, nah, no. Nah. And then this one, I won't, well, maybe I'll try to say, it's that, like the earlier one, like this one, but with an R after it. So, okay. so uh, I don't know whether everyone, let's say, these are relatively uncontroversial, like, uh, like Li Fang Kui said this, these two, uh, and then this one is from Hong Luyun in the 90s, I think, late 90s. You know, I don't know whether people generally agree or not, but uh, the idea, but the, I'm following here Vaccine Cigar in 2014. So they proposed in uh, their 2014 book that in a Western dialect of Chinese, uh, these are four sources of he in Middle China. Yeah? Okay. So now we have four, five, six, seven possible origins of the sound ha in uh, Chinese. Uh, so how, how, so which one is it, right? We have to try to narrow it down, okay. So let's look at the Shishang connections of tiger. I don't know if everyone here like knows what is Shishang series, yeah? Okay, uh, so which characters does are written using tiger as phonetic, right? So here they are, and they're and I'm giving the middle Chinese, right? So who kyo cho lu yo pyu and draw yo. So then I reconstruct the ones that are easy to reconstruct. Okay. So this is just, if you just follow normal ways of like, you know, I don't know, if you just take one class in reconstructing old Chinese and someone says, okay, reconstruct these words into from middle Chinese into old Chinese, this is what you would get. So quite, uh, these are the easy ones, right? So this kyo can either come from kra or from ka. We do, it's hard, you can't tell in mer. So then we write the R in parentheses because we don't know. Does it have an R? Does it not have an R? Anyhow. Uh, then this is to, and it comes from ta, ha. So again, this is the this is the tang uh, Okay, and then this one's very easy. So lai mu comes from R in in uh, old Chinese, so it's ra. Uh, and then this has to do with uh, this j means sandang. In in uh, middle Chinese, yeah. yeah. So uh, that's why there's no little symbol. This symbol means not sanda. <laughs> okay. Uh, so this one is ra. This one ras. So this h is the crucial. Yeah. So this is pra, and then this one is ra. 
So this is how I think, you know, if you, if I gave you a test and said to reconstruct these words into old Chinese, this is how you should do it. Yeah, okay. Uh, so now I just point out that uh, this one, this ta is, is weird, right? Like they all have some kind of ra in them, except this one. Okay, yeah. Uh,那所以所以这个虎都是他们的生堂，所以这一系列字就叫斜生字，就就是它的生堂是虎。那它就是根据这个，因为这系列字的生堂都有虎嘛。那刚才前面讲的就是。那到底你的就是说呃我们现在读成古中国汉也读古但是呢上古汉它并不读古那它前面解释的是呃韵母为什么是呃就说上古是啊呃不是乌就是现在韵母古的韵母是乌嘛对不对但是上古它是啊那为
呃，都有这个日，就是日，就是呃，在上古音里面，它是表示了，就是我们现在读了来嘛，对不对？但是在上古它读日是不一样的。那他就说他的他共同的地方都有一个日。Yeah, so uh, like I, I I skipped this, but just you know, if, if you read their book Baxter and Cigar, they think that the pa would change to just pa, yeah. So this is like I'm allowed to do it. It's okay if I really want to put a ra into this. It's how it looks, yeah. So now it, you know, like. Well, I'll just go back here and say, okay. So now it's ra 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 ra, and probably ra right or ra yeah. So now the question is, what about who? Yeah, what does who come from? Like the tiger word, yeah. So let's go back and remind ourselves. These are all the options. So. Is it this one? No, probably not, right? Is it this one? No. This one? No. This one? This one? This one? Which one is it? It's the R, right? Because, okay, because, you know, let's say these are the possible sources of H. And only the, the R would make sense. In the series, right? Here's R. Here's R. All, all R everywhere. R, yeah. So that means who also has to have an R, right? Because we only get R as a source of uh in a Western dial. So now it looks to me like this is what we should reconstruct, right? Because this is the only way to get the whole series to make sense. But this is not what Baxter and Cigar do. This is what Baxter and Cigar do. So they reconstruct this Q H R A. So this kra, yeah, and kra, and then th this one we don't know. It could be a T or a K or a T. They don't, know, yeah. But they think this one some kind of consonant, and then this one a T, ka. So they think that. Ka is somehow the same. So I don't know why, right? Or it's confusing. Like so far, I've tried to do everything by the rules. Like, okay, we say what are the sources of who, uh, the ha sound, what's in the Cheshun series, and I came up with a different reconstruction. So why do they do it? Let's see what they say in their book. So they say as. Noted by Norman, 1973, the Min dialects occasionally have Proto Min KH for K. Yeah. So this is. Oops. <laughs> okay. Uh, so here you can read the you know the quote in Chinese. If you want. And then these are the forms they give. And I don't know these dialects, so I can't really pronounce it well. But so in uh, Zhengqing they say "hu," yeah, and in Jian uh, O they say "hu," uh, and then in Jian uh, Yang they say "ho," "ho," yeah. Okay, so these mean forms. That's why Baxter and Cigar reconstruct the Q. Yeah, so. Now I have a problem, right? Which is I like my reconstructions more, right? Because,、uh, you know, let's just remind ourselves: this is this is mine, yeah.、Uh, so I want this in order to get the R everywhere, right? So theirs doesn't have the R everywhere. Mine has the R everywhere. I think it's the only way to make sense of the Shechem series is to have the R in all of the characters. So, what do I do with these min forms?、Uh, okay, I go forward. Just pause on this one, just to remind you. Yeah.
Yeah, so so now I need to change my reconstructions to somehow explain these min dialing. And, uh, you know, I don't, I'm not going to invent some whole new system of old Chinese reconstruction. So instead, I just ask, okay, Baxter and Cigar, they don't do it. But according to their rules, according to their system, what am I allowed to do? Can I uh, keep what I've done so far with the, the ra and also explain the min forms following their system, but not following their choice of how to reconstruct who? So these are the min forms, yeah. And then this is what I propose. So basically, uh, I add a K with a schwa vowel. So K, K, Ra, yeah? And then K, Ra. And then here, we already had it, Ra. Uh, but it could be a type. Oh, I'm sorry, yeah. Uh, well, I don't really need to do this, but I, I'm allowed to. I can just make it look more similar, right? So uh, according, this is all according to the Baxter and Cigar rules. Uh, these are things I can do. So now I've made myself happy because uh, these K's in the word for tiger can explain the min forms, but I still have the R to explain why the Chaechung series is written all with R's, right? So that's kind of tentatively, this is what I propose to reconstruct. Do so 我们就共鸣就是就是说我们的我们不知道古人怎么说话所以我们是在做一个假设就是你要解释 Okay, so, uh, you know, in a way I could stop here and just say this is what I propose to reconstruct. But I keep talking anyhow. Let's look at words for tiger in the fang yan. You know the fang yan? The, it's, I always am confused because fang yan is just the normal Chinese word for dialect, right? But it's also the name of a book from the Han Dynasty, yeah? So I'm talking about the book from the Han Dynasty. Yeah? So in this book from the Han Dynasty, uh, called the fang yan, uh, we look for who, and these are the four possible, you know, words for tiger that occur in the Fang Yan. So here they are in Middle Chinese, and here they are in, in Old Chinese, just according to the normal rules. So it means that, you know, uh, in the Han Dynasty, there were somehow words like this, <laughs> you know, uh, that meant tiger. So something like Kula, 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 Kula. Okay. 
呃，楚人把这个布呃布就是鱼，那所以这也是，就是呃，楚人把这个啊叫鱼兔，而且现在这个楚简也也有就是一样的记载，呃，所以。是呃，是我们做要还原这个虎的上古音是什么，呃，就要根据这些材料来做。那比如说像这个鱼，鱼的上古音它就读咔啊啊不嘎嘎嘎嘎啦，嗯嘎，就是然后那个吐是是从那个心里来的，所以就是嗯、呃，这就是为什么它是这样。So now, how do we incorporate this information, right? Well, what's the big difference between what I had reconstructed and and these four? These forms have an L, whereas I reconstructed an R. Yeah, just remind you, this is what I had, right? So I said, uh, yeah. But in the Fang Yan, it's not Kara, it's Kala. Okay, so what to do? Well, it turns out that in the history of Chinese, Sha and Sha merged. They were, they became the same thing. Yeah. So now I give you some evidence of that. So this is the merger of Sha and Sha. So uh, this guy, his name is Tang. <laughs> okay, uh, he was the founder of the Shang Dynasty. Yeah. So uh, later, his name is written Tang. This one. So it so it used to be this one. Then it was this one. I think it's Soup. Is it Mr. Soup? <laughs> 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 uh, okay, so this one reconstructs it reconstructs to slang, yeah. This is from Baxter Cigar. So it shows that sla and shla they merged, yeah. This is a this is a tongja relationship, right? So because sla and shla merge. Then I can reconstruct. I can reconstruct kala, the flap. Yeah, no problem. Okay, now you say, ah, uh, wait a second. You reconstruct hey, the flap, but these forms they're not k. Hey. This is in the fangya. Wait, wait just a second here. You can see here. These ones, it's, it's Q, it's not K, it's Q, yeah? So you think, ah, you're wrong because it's a Q, it's not a K. So how do I deal with this? It's actually no problem at all. Because in type A syllables, that means in E dung, R dung, and S dung, although it's a little bit more complicated than that. <laughs> but basically, in not uh, sung dung, then a K in the Han Dynasty was pronounced like a Q. Uh, and uh, the way we know this actually is loans from uh, Chinese into Miao Yao. So Miao Yao, they distinguish K and K. Yeah? And in Sandang, they borrow K as K. But outside Sandang, they borrow K as K. So we know that in the Han Dynasty, ke in non sangdam so we'd say type A syllables, was pronounced as ke. Yeah, this part maybe people don't follow. <laughs> yes. This is three. 
就是就是中国音译，它是要分一本、二本、三本、四本啊。然后就是呃，就是一本、二本和四本，它的就是演变呃是是可以分成一类，还有三本是一类，所以。呃，就是像你们看到那个有一个问号的那个符号，呃，它就是这种区别，就是呃有有那个问号的，就是它就是呃一二四一二四，然后有嗯没有那个是三，那其实其他就说呃上古是非三的那种。那是第二次的啊，第二次他觉得他的就是他的歌是来自，这个歌是我们现在说的是叫软二音嘛，但是那个然后那个歌是是一个小舌音，是更后面啊，其实它是呃，就是我们人体的这个发音器官有小舌音在在在这里面，然后舌根音靠前一点。再往前就是我们比较熟悉的，比如呢呢，叫舌音嘛，对，啊，那所以说在呃，就是他是说这个呃非三本的歌，就是应该是发小舌音。So, uh, now, let me just sum up and say this reconstruction it、uh, explains the Shishang relationships. Uh. It explains the Min forms, and it explains the evidence from the Fangyan. So I think it's kind of has a lot going for it. <laughs> so、uh, and this thing about Miao Miao loans is just to point out that the Fangyan form with the Q aren't a problem. It's okay. I can reconstruct. Okay, it's okay. So I like this reconstruction. It's what I'm endorsing. It's.、Uh, Deals with the Shishang evidence. It deals with the Min evidence, and it deals with the Fangyan. Oh, and then also, you know, like it's it's almost exactly the same as the Khmer, Mon, Burmese, right? So it's Kala, right? So it, it makes a lot of sense as a, a borrowing from Southeast Asia into Old Chinese. So now the question is,、uh, what about Tibetan and Japanese. So、uh, I again, I don't think like I don't think this really matters in a sense. Like、uh, if you don't like it, that's fine. You, like if you're convinced so far, we can say who cares what Tibetan and Japanese come from. But、uh, let's try to see what we can do with it. So、uh, this so ta ta could come from shla. Basically, you get rid of the k at the beginning. K, k, shla. You drop the k, then you get shla. Then it would become ka in Chinese, right? So if Tibetan and Japanese borrow the word from Chinese, they borrow it probably from a form like this. Yeah. So you can imagine、uh, that the Japanese tora comes from ta. Uh, but what about Tibetan stuck?、Yeah. Well, the S is the problem. So we would expect the ta to be borrowed as gta in Tibetan, but it's not gta; it's stuck.、Uh, but and, and let's say according to Tibetan orthography, gta should be possible. But actually, I'll just tell you, it looks weird to me. Like, looks weird. No, no word guitar. So maybe it's not possible for phonotactic reasons. I'm not sure. I would have to study the question more. Say like, why, you know, why did they borrow top as stuck and not guitar? It's this is the weakest point I think for me. So now I just conclude in old Chinese. The word for tiger was kshla. In early Han Chinese, it was kshla. 
<laughs> yeah. So the K changes to a Q in type A syllable. It's normal. And then this form is recorded with these spellings in the Fang Yen. In a Western dialect of later Han, we get Ta, and that becomes Pu. In a Eastern dialect of later Han, we get Ta. And then this is borrowed as stuck and Tora. So that's the summary of what I think happened. So what are the problems? So, so Tibet is in the West. So why would they borrow a word from Eastern dialect Han? This is a problem, right? But it's not necessarily a big deal because the capital is Lo Loyan and Loyan is in the East. Yeah. So maybe it's okay. But it's uh, if you think it's a problem, I, okay, I'm okay with that, right? Like Tibet's in the West, they should borrow the Western word, not the Eastern word. But they borrowed the Eastern word. That's one problem, but not a big problem, I think. The other problem is why does Chinese, like modern Chinese, why did they use the Western word rather than the Eastern word? So I don't have an explanation for that, but it's part of the larger question of uh, how different dialects merge in the Han Dynasty to create Middle Chinese. Uh, but so these are, you know, I think these are some problems that need maybe more research. But uh, basically, I'm happy with, I'm happy with this story. So that's everything. So I just say, thank you. Xie Xie. Uh, Uh 所以没有说告诉他没座位就是汉藏语研究的学者是以前本科是在我们这里读的老虎大家说非常熟悉的动物那等一下就是
帮帮你们呃翻译一下，好吧？啊，那那我们现在就以热烈掌声欢迎一下叶教授。